that sound good? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Let's take a break right now to, because if we continue to call on the name of Jesus, you know something's going to happen up in here. Well, good afternoon again. My name is Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated. And we have the great pleasure of rendering hope and encouragement, and I like to put on uh, there as well, inspiration to the whole wide world. And that's what we're going to do. Let's bring in my co-host on today. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I missed you all. My name is Takira Swan. I'm the co-host of Project 365, and I'm so happy to be here. And before we get started with our guest today, I just wanted to give a huge special shout out to Bruce Glover. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. And uh, we just love you so much, and we're so happy to share this uh, next year with you. So, Amen. Bruce Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday. That's a good friend of mine. And I'm grateful that he was a friend of my husband's. He's a friend of mine. And he's, you know, I want you to celebrate as much as you can. All right. Listen, today we have the great pleasure of talking about nonprofit organizations and more so not just for the United States of America, but we're talking about international uh, organizations. They live here, but they support um organizations in other countries. And we are so blessed to have our guest today in the person of Cassandra Smalls Nicholson. Hello, Cassandra. Hello. And she's gonna, she's gonna share with us today her experience and some of the work that she does. And be, even before she starts, I would love if, if you would have the opportunity, and I know that you will, have the opportunity to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, share, subscribe, comment, like, all of that, because you, you are the ones that's going to help us to take this message of hope, encouragement, and inspiration around the world. We can't do it alone. We need your help. So we're asking, would you help us to do that? Um, and even before we uh, release the platform to Cassandra, what I wanted to do, oh, here we go. What I wanted to do as well, in conjunction to what she is going to share about her organization, I also wanted to share uh, in, about an organization that does somewhat the same work as Cassandra does. So I wanted you to keep this in mind as well as uh, the information that she is going to share. I wanted to share uh, the information about an organization by the name of um, ministry Beyond Myself, and that is uh, the, the founder of that organization, and I'm sure she is the president as well, is Christy Herring, uh, a great, great friend of mine, and uh, she is doing great work as well. Uh, she, they serve the communities primarily in Mexico and the Dominican Republic, but they've also, also have done work in the Bahamas, they've done work in Haiti, Guatemala, and Puerto Rico, and their website is www.ministrybeyondmyself.org. And um, I just wanted you to know that information because many of us already know Christy. And uh, like I said, she does somewhat, somewhat of the same type of work that Cassandra does. So keep that in mind as Cassandra shares, and then you will have an idea um, however the Lord leads you, supporting Cassandra and or also supporting uh, Christy as well. So there's a lot of organizations around. But if you notice in my, um, the information I shared in the post, let, they should be reputable organizations. So that way you don't mind giving, you don't mind supporting. And also you want to think, how can I how can I help other than pray? In addition to praying, how can I help? And I know Cassandra is going to share a lot of that. And at this time, we want to uh, present to some and to introduce to others none other than Cassandra Smalls Nicholson. You've got it, Cassandra. 
Thank you so much. It's so wonderful being here with you guys this morning as we talk about my organization. I just love my children so much. As you see, I refer to them as my children. Truly, God blessed me when he introduced me to them and had me to think outside of my own self in what I'm able to give and what I'm able to share, how much my love could be just extended more than just my own personal needs, my own church, my own people in my community, that he showed me there's a greater need and there's more and that anyone can do it. No matter how much, how little you have, there is a place for you to give. And, and I just love that he showed me the opportunity to be a part of that. So Hope Foundation Liberia. This is a project that started way before me. Um, actually, my, my former mother-in-law, she was a part of the Peace Corps back in the 70s and she traveled to Liberia and she did her, her time there of service and she impacted lives. And two young men came back to the United States they um, got their visas and they came back and they were impacted and want to be a part of this great country that she talked about so much. And they came and they applied for citizenship and raised their families, but they had a love for their home country, Liberia. And Tony Barchu, one of the young men, they grew up like brothers with my husband and he had a dream that he wanted to be able to educate the young children there. And that was foreign to me because I've always grown up with free education, free public school. So even when my parents chose to send me to private school or to send me to Catholic school, I did have the understanding that if you wanted to go to school, it was free. But in Liberia, college is free, but you have to pay for elementary education. And to me, that just seemed really backward in the sense, how do I get to college level if I can't afford to get through the third grade? And that just posed a dilemma for me. But I was very hesitant upon helping him with his vision because I, I had the language barrier. I'd never been there. I, I wasn't quite sure. I had a lot of questions, a lot of things that I thought I could not possibly have answered. But God showed me through different coworkers. He allowed me just to, to meet Liberians and to understand that what I was told was actually the truth and that there was a desperate need because wherever you are, that one truth still remains. Education is the key to pulling yourself up, pulling your family up, rising the level of poverty so that you don't have to endure certain things. And so I knew that once you teach someone something, once they learn something, you, can't, you cannot take that away from them. And I come from a family of educators, so that's kind of bred in me. With pastoring, there's education. So I, I was just immersed with this program. And he started the program in 2011. And, you know, me and my husband, we helped on the level that we could. But just like God, he's just awesome. He connected us with people who had resources, people who had the same vision, because it, it says a lot when you don't have to pull teeth to get people to join in and see your vision. And so the vision actually is, it's threefold. It's mind, body, and soul. So we started with the vision of the education, the educational piece with the school. So we not only provide them free preschool education, but we also feed the children twice a day. Now, our big dilemma came in that because a lot of our children had never had schooling, so they were physically past the preschool age. However, they never had schooling. So that brought additional challenges to us that we still needed to teach them that elementary 
education, but we needed to break those classes up. So we quickly expanded. Um, our first class was only set at the number 35. We quickly, by the time I made my first trip to Liberia, we were already well over 100. So we um, had land that was donated to us and we quickly formed a building project. So right now we are close to 200 students that we are committed to feeding every day. So our spirit portion of this is we were determined because all of us that are on the board, we are Christian and we believe that our education does not just stop with books, reading, writing, and arithmetic as we learn in, in elementary phases, but that also it was necessary for us to have an understanding of who our creator is and who he has created you to be. And that even though you may face challenges, nothing is impossible with God. And so to instill in that, that strong sense of who they are and that they can overcome life's challenges. So when you don't have somewhere there, somewhere that's cheering you on, you have Holy Spirit on the inside that's always cheering you on. So we built a church as well. So our building model includes a, a physical church with each school that we rehabilitate. So we have the school piece and we have the church piece. Also, when we were there, we saw that medically they were challenged, that their hospital was not quite up to American standards. And I'm the kind of person, if I'm not comfortable with bringing someone to a facility, if I'm not comfortable sharing that, I do whatever is in my power to ensure. And that's, that's the same tenacity that we took with the medical challenge portion that we needed the hospitals to be clean. We needed for the facilities to be in good working order. We needed to at least feel comfortable being there, comfortable in the staff. They had the education, they had the know-how, they just lacked the resources. They lacked clean running water, they lacked electricity and different I can't even imagine just being in the middle of a procedure and your electricity going out so different challenges that we could face and so right now we're in the middle of working on that third part of our program our building model was getting their medical up to par, getting their medical standards where they don't have to travel villages away to get medical help. And so that's very important to us, uh, making connections that pharmaceuticals get to them because a lot of them are in the bush area. When we think of Liberia, you may think of the city, Monrovia, but the majority of people don't live in Monrovia. The majority of the poor people don't live in Monrovia. So we have to also create access for the majority of Liberia's citizens. And so I'm, I'm just thankful for that little piece that God allows us to bring our resources, our ingenuity, so that we can help people that we, we may have never come in contact with. Yeah, that is amazing. Now, what, what country is it again? Liberia. Liberia. Yes. Yeah, That's so that. the, the, uh, when they're doing a medical procedure, it's possible that they don't, they would have to do it in the daytime. Yes. Yes, wow. because their electricity was so spotty. So there, there are so many things that we can do. Um, they, they do have resources. Resources are allocated, but as we know, government doesn't always run as smoothly as we would like it to. And sometimes those funds never make it to their intended 
resource areas. So one of the challenges that we did have was when we came to the country, we met with a lot of the officials there and to let them know we are in the area and we're doing things with a level of integrity. We're doing things with a level of accountability. And when we say this is what we're doing, we expect for these projects to actually come to fruition. And then we can help you with other projects, but we also need a certain level of accountability from you as well. So we're, we're happy to see that there has been some change, but as you know, change is slow, but I am determined. I am determined to see change come for the people of Liberia. That is so amazing that, wow. That is so amazing that the children, well, the parents have to pay for elementary school. Yes. For them to go to school. To go to school. And college is free. And college is free. That does sound backwards. It's so, it's so backwards. It's just yet another barrier that we find that keeps people locked into a position of poverty. Because to anyone, that just makes absolutely no sense. And how this system is allowed to perpetuate itself is unfathomable. So the, uh, how, uh, let's see, what we would do is put your information in the chat room. We would, we would do that in the comment section. And it, it just takes so many of us with diverse backgrounds to make up this world. There's the purpose that God has given us uh, in our lives, that's placed in our lives. There are those that take care of children. There, there are those that also cannot stand to work with children. There are those that um, work with uh, those that are physically or mentally challenged. And then again, there are those that cannot there are those that work with food that love to be with around food and in the kitchen. There are those that can't stand to be in the kitchen. So whatever it is that God has given, the purpose that He's given us, we have to be intentional about intentional about working with it, causing Absolutely. it to manifest. It's not necessarily that we're helping God, but give God something to work with. Absolutely. Absolutely. The money, the money that, um, and I know, I've seen. Um, it was some type of, uh, whether it was on CNN, 2020, something like that, Dateline. But I know there are times, many times when monies are given to organizations in other countries, but they rarely see it. Absolutely. So the money that is, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I was agreeing with you. So that was one of our challenges to be diligent over what is given to us to be great stewards of that because we understand that we may have the ability if you need more rice you know what stores to go to whether it's all these whatever that's in your particular area shop right path mark whatever you can go and get more but if you don't have access, you don't have funds, it's not quite that simple. So we need to ensure that what we're doing also that we are sustainable in what we do. And so that is part of our program as well, that we teach the children according to the culture that they're in. And they do a lot of agriculture. So our thought process is how do we make agriculture easy because they do a lot of things manually and so we introduce automation to them and so our board member um our chairman of our board actually his daughter is also a member of the board she has her degree in agriculture um the visionary tony barchu his son has a degree in um agriculture as well so we teach the children how to mechanize their farming, how to mechanize when to plant. You know, I'm a city girl through and through. All I know is when to wear my red bottoms, when not to wear my red bottoms. But they do teach them when to 
plant this particular crop and when to do that. So we're raising chickens, we're raising goats, we're teaching them how to make it sustainable yes. so that should we not be here for whatever reason, they can still make it on what we've already taught them through these last 10 years. That's so amazing. And then when you see the work, when you see the work uh, of where your money is going, even though we may not ever, some of the in people here in the USA may not ever get to Nigeria or Liberia, mm -hmm. um, we may not get there. However, with you doing the work, we're giving you the money to you. We're donating. It's tax de deductible. Absolutely. And so that's we're giving the power of partnership. That's the power yes. of partnership yes. that you play an integral part. So I thank God for every donor that he has um, hooked us up with who helped us make this a reality, no matter how small, no matter how large yes. your gift. Your gift has been important to us. Yes. That's what I say, whether it's $1, because even though you say my $1 may not make a difference, yes, it will. Your $10, your $100, your $1,000, if it's in your heart to give, God will make a way for you to give it. Now, that's one of the things that uh, Christy Herring does with her her ministry, Ministry Beyond Myself. I know uh, at one point I had adopted a uh, child and she even has the pictures of the child that you may want to adopt. Um, so I encourage you go to her website and uh, leave your name, number, see how you can help. And then if you say, well, I don't even have any money, you can still help by making phone calls, by uh, um, your services. Um, when she has an event, take that event, that flyer, post it on your social media platforms. There is a way that you can help. Now, these children that are out of the country, they are still God's children. They may not look like us, but some of them are probably smarter than us. Many <laughs> they of us. look like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. But I mean, as far as like shirt and tie suit, you know, that kind of red bottoms, anything like that. But all at the same time, they're God's children and we have the responsibility to help where we can. So thank you so very much, Cassandra. One more thing is I want you to share about the bus that you got there. Oh my goodness. It, I'm telling you, everything has just been such a blessing to us. And the chairman, Mark Arden, he's an avid giver. And this is why you never should discount because someone is a different color than you, a different religion than you. God is able to use whomever he wants to use. And he has been such a blessing to this ministry. And people just give him things or he purchases them purchases them out of his own pocket. So we just recently obtained a school bus, full-size school bus. We've also received two minivans. We received two, um, I call them the police cars, I think Crown Victorias. We also, so that because he had a vision, he never wanted to see the children walking alongside the road because the road was long and the road was dangerous. And so he just kept praying that God would show him some vehicles. So we've sent over at least five vehicles now with the school bus being the sixth vehicle. And I'm just so happy. And when I see the little children next to the bus, they've already put their school sign on it. And it's just amazing what God can do. So I thank anyone, any level of giving is greatly appreciated. Now, on that road that they have to walk, you said it's dangerous. What type of danger do they encounter? The danger could be the, the traffic on the road because people aren't expecting. It's not a road like we would think a road would be. So people may not expect anyone to be traveling by foot and may be driving some sort of reckless. And so there the little children are. Or there could be folks praying on them because they're walking and they're young and they take opportunity to take advantage of them. So various challenges um, just for them trying to come and get an education. So we are always mindful of the security of our children and we try to secure the area. We 
um, built a well. So a lot of townspeople come because they can get fresh water from that particular well. All we ask is when they come to be a part that they would then come with their gifts and their talents, teach, bring a chicken, show somebody how to mine the eggs from the chicken and what we need to do so that we can all have a part in what God is allowing us to create. So I'm thankful that I've had many people to partner with me, many of my girlfriends who are pastors in their own right, they've opened up their congregation and shared the vision and they have given numerous donations. So I'm thankful. And Mr. Arden, in his way, he's gotten uh, his law firm. He's gotten uh, many of the lodges and different things. The school board district from Georgetown, South Carolina, whenever they are finished with their old um, books and writing utensils, they load them up and put them in the next container and we ship them on to Liberia. So we've been very blessed, very fortunate to have books and different things like that for our children. One of the senior ladies um, knitting groups just made our children little handmade dolls. So we, we just, we're blessed and, and whatever you feel led to contribute, we do gladly accept it. Okay, so I um one of the th this is my last statement to Kira. You're cute. <laughs> um, um, what was my thought? Oh, um, my I don't know what it was with my husband. He and he like ink pens and pencils and markers. I have a tongue down there. They're coming your way. They're coming your way. Thank you. will, um, but all at the same time, I encourage the audience. If it's something that you have, whether it's uh, writing utensils, paper, books, old books, yes. Um, matter of fact, uh, Cassandra, when you get a chance, just yeah, uh, just list a few things and then put them in the uh, comment section of things that you could use. And uh, don't forget, don't forget Ministry Beyond Myself with Christy Heron. Check with her to see what you can do to assist her in her organization. You look out for other people. God will make sure someone looks out for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so I just want to say that I'm so thankful for organizations um, like yours because um, it's always good to give back to an organization that has integrity, an organization that you can hold accountable and you have proof like, okay, the proof is in the pudding. People are putting in work. You give money, this is where the money is going to. So I just encourage everyone out there listening, if you want to give back, um, like they said before, no dollar amount is too small. And especially when it comes to um, to volunteering and giving uh, donations to other countries as well, like the currency exchange rate and how everything goes wherever you're, wherever you're sending your money to is completely different. So $5 over here, may do a world of difference over there, you know, or it could buy so much more. And, and what are you going to do with that $5 anyway? You're going to spend it probably on junk or, you know, a snack you shouldn't be having. I'm just assuming. But, uh, <laughs> but um, and if you're uncomfortable, like they said, with uh, donating your money, the best thing you can do is donate your services, whether it's, you know, um, giving or getting gifts uh, goods together to give to um, the organization you're giving to or teaching or trade let me tell you teaching your trade and helping a community be self-sustaining is like one of the best gifts you can give like to anyone on earth whether it's here in the states or overseas teaching a community whether it's urban or not to be self-sustaining and and be able to care for yourself and you know circulate that the dollar of that community that's what it's all about. So we just really want to encourage you guys, okay, to volunteer. If it's not with her organization, there are so many reputable organizations out here. So it's no excuse. So <laughs> just give back, even if it's in your own community, especially. I always feel that it's good to give back locally and abroad because everyone needs help. And if they're willing and asking for help, then I think, you know, you should give it if that's the heart that you have. Ask the Lord 
where's your circle of influence and what you can do. And especially springtime's coming up. I've already started my spring cleaning at the house. We're doing, um, you know, our Sparkle Joy project. <laughs> but, you know, we have, so if you have items that are still in great condition and good condition and you don't need them anymore, see what organizations can use them. Like you said, you have pens and pencils. You have kids here who are just trying to make it and get an education in elementary school, you know, grade school notebooks we have uh the composition notebooks that we have here that cost what a dollar sometimes well they're on sale for 10 for a dollar get some composition notebooks and donate them say hey do you need these do you need number two pencils things that really don't cost us that much that would make a world of difference to a child anywhere please just donate and just you know look within your heart and see what you can do to help um yeah, that's pretty much all I have today. Thank you so much for coming on the broadcast and sharing your organization with us. I feel like it's so good to see, especially women of color coming together and have an organization that's reputable that you can just donate and give your, your money or services to. So I definitely appreciate you and your efforts. Thank you yes. so much Thank you. for having yes. us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Cassandra. And uh, I left it off the uh, actual title as pastor, only because there are times when like uh, people get lost. Okay, she's a pastor, she can do whatever. No, she's got her hand, feet, mind, soul, and body in this. Yes. Though she's senior pastor, she's not just delegating, she's into it. She's doing it, doing the work. So again, Cassandra, thank you so very much for accepting the invitation to come and share to our audience and to our audience, I am prayerful that you will find an organization that you will be able to support. You may not be able to support it like other people or support it financially, um, but somewhere along the line, you can really support, even if it's picking up the phone and encouraging the sponsor or the leader or the president or the founder of it. Um, send an email, shoot a text. When you know someone's in your corner, it gives you a whole nother um, level of encouragement. But today, Cassandra, thank you for that hope. Thank you for that encouragement and thank you for the inspiration that you shared on today. And on that note, we're going to leave you on today, but I encourage you to intentionally Go after the promise that God has given you. You meet him, he's definitely going to meet you. All right, God bless, and we'll see you tomorrow.